Welcome to Unlimited Horror Stories, a channel dedicated to bringing you the most thrilling and captivating stories from all genres. Today, we are excited to share with you a unique and inspiring story that will take you on a journey to discover the wonders of the natural world and the urgent need to protect it. Join us as we follow the adventures of Alex and his team, a group of explorers and filmmakers who venture into some of the most remote and beautiful places on Earth. From the Andes Mountains to the Amazon rainforest, they discover new species, learn about the rich cultural heritage of indigenous people, and fight to protect the natural world from destruction. Their journey is a powerful reminder of the beauty and complexity of the environment, and the urgent need to preserve it for future generations. Through their films and documentaries, they inspire others to take action and make a difference in the world. We invite you to support our channel and the important work of Alex and his team by subscribing and sharing our content. Together, we can raise awareness of the need to protect the natural world and inspire others to take action. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery and conservation. Now let's start. The sun had just risen over the rolling hills of Siskiyou County, California casting a warm glow across the vast, untouched wilderness. In the distance, a trio of amateur filmmakers were setting up camp, preparing for their latest project, a documentary on Bigfoot. As they set up their cameras and equipment, the filmmakers discussed their plans for the shoot. Jake, the director and self-proclaimed Bigfoot expert, was eager to capture footage of the elusive creature. He had spent years studying Bigfoot sightings and believed that Siskiyou County was the perfect location for their documentary. The other two members of the team were a bit more skeptical. Emily, the sound engineer, had only agreed to come on the trip to get away from the city for a while. She wasn't sure if she believed in Bigfoot, but she was excited to be out in nature and work on a new project. Max, the cameraman, was the most reluctant member of the team. He had been dragged into the project by Jake, his college roommate, and had little interest in Bigfoot or the documentary. He was more concerned about the long hike ahead of them and the possibility of encountering dangerous animals in the wilderness. As they set off on their trek, the team marveled at the beauty of the forest. The towering trees, the babbling brooks, and the chirping birds all seemed to welcome them into their world. But as they delved deeper into the woods, the atmosphere changed. The once friendly forest now seemed eerie and foreboding. The trees grew thicker, casting dark shadows on the forest floor, and the animals fell silent. The only sounds were the crunch of leaves underfoot and the occasional rustling in the bushes. Emily couldn't shake off the feeling that they were being watched, and Max's unease was palpable. Jake, on the other hand, was too excited about the prospect of finding Bigfoot to notice the change in atmosphere. As they set up camp for the night, Max protested about the location. He was worried about the lack of visibility and the dense foliage surrounding them. But Jake was insistent that they stay put, citing the abundance of Bigfoot sightings in the area. As the night fell, the team huddled around the campfire, discussing their plans for the next day. Suddenly, a loud rustling in the bushes interrupted their conversation. They froze, listening intently. Then a large shadowy figure emerged from the darkness, and the team gasped in shock. It was Bigfoot. The creature stood over eight feet tall, with shaggy brown fur and piercing yellow eyes. Its powerful arms hung by its side, and its massive feet made deep imprints in the soil. The team was paralyzed with fear, unsure of what to do. Jake, the one who had been so eager to find Bigfoot, was now the most terrified. He fumbled for his camera, trying to capture the moment, but his hands were shaking too much. Emily and Max were frozen in place, too scared to even move. The creature stared at them for a moment, then let out a deafening roar that echoed through the forest. It took a few steps towards the group, and they all stumbled backward, tripping over themselves and falling to the ground. The creature raised its massive arms, ready to strike. But just as quickly as it had appeared, the creature turned and ran back into the forest, disappearing into the darkness. The team sat in stunned silence, trying to process what had just happened. 
After a few minutes of silence, Max finally spoke up. We need to get out of here, he said, his voice shaking. Now, Jake, still in shock, nodded in agreement. Yeah, you're right, he said. Let's pack up and get out of here. As they hastily packed up their gear, the team tried to make sense of what had just happened. Was that really Bigfoot? And if so, why did it run away instead of attacking them? As they trudged through the forest, the team couldn't shake off the feeling that they were being followed. Every rustle of leaves and every snap of a twig made them jump, and they quickened their pace, desperate to get out of the woods. Eventually, they stumbled upon a dirt road, and they knew they were close to civilization. They breathed a sigh of relief and hurried down the road, eager to put as much distance between themselves and the forest as possible. As they walked, they talked about what they had just experienced. Max was the first to speak up. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think we should go back there, he said. That thing was huge, and it could have killed us if it wanted to. I agree, Emily chimed in. I don't care how much footage we could have gotten. I don't want to risk my life for a documentary. Jake, however, was still reeling from the encounter. But think about it, he said. We just saw Bigfoot. We have to go back and get more footage. The other two members of the team looked at him incredulously. Are you crazy? Max said. We're lucky to be alive. We're not going back there. Jake was about to argue when they heard a low growling noise coming from the woods behind them. They turned around to see a pair of glowing yellow eyes staring at them from the darkness. The team froze, unsure of what to do. Then, the creature stepped out of the shadows. It was Bigfoot, and this time, it wasn't running away. The team could see the anger in its eyes, and they knew they were in trouble. Without a word, they turned and ran down the road as fast as they could. Behind them, they could hear the creature giving chase, its heavy footsteps making the ground shake. They ran for what felt like hours, their hearts pounding in their chests, until they finally stumbled upon a small town. They burst into the local diner, panting and gasping for breath. The few locals who were there turned to stare at them in confusion. What the hell happened to you guys? One of them asked. The team tried to catch their breath as they recounted their encounter with Bigfoot. The locals listened intently, their eyes widening with each detail. After a few moments of stunned silence, one of the locals spoke up. You guys shouldn't have gone out there, he said. There are stories about Bigfoot in those woods. Nobody goes in there after dark. The team looked at each other, realizing that they had stumbled into something much more dangerous than they had anticipated. They had thought they were making a documentary, but now they realized that they were in the middle of a horror story. As they sat in the diner, sipping hot coffee and trying to calm down, they knew that they had a decision to make. They could either pack up and leave Siskiyou County, never to return, or they could face their fears and continue with the documentary, knowing that they might not make it out alive. It was a decision that would change their lives forever. The next morning, the team woke up to the sound of birds chirping outside their tent. They were still shaken from their encounter with Bigfoot the night before, but they knew they had to keep moving forward with their documentary. As they set out on the trail, the forest seemed even more ominous than it had the day before. The trees were thicker, the underbrush denser, and the silence more oppressive. Emily kept her hand on the sound recorder, ready to capture any unusual sounds that might come their way. They walked for hours, following the trail deeper into the wilderness. The sun was high in the sky when they came across a clearing. In the center of the clearing stood a large tree, with a massive, gnarled trunk and branches that reached towards the sky. Jake's eyes lit up when he saw the tree. That's it, he exclaimed. That's the tree from the sighting. The other two members of the team looked at him skeptically. How do you know that? Max asked. Jake pulled out a tattered map and pointed to a spot on it. This tree is a landmark, he explained. It's where one of the most famous Bigfoot sightings in Siskiyou County took place. The team set up their cameras around the tree, eager to capture any evidence of Bigfoot that they could. 
They spent hours filming and taking pictures, but the forest remained silent. No strange noises, no unusual sightings, nothing to suggest that Bigfoot was anywhere near them. As the day wore on, the team began to feel uneasy. There was something off about the clearing, something that they couldn't quite put their finger on. They tried to ignore the feeling and focus on their work, but it was becoming increasingly difficult. As the sun began to set, Jake called it a day. We'll come back tomorrow, he said. Maybe we'll have better luck then. The team packed up their gear and began to make their way back to camp. But as they walked, they realized that they were hopelessly lost. The trail that had led them to the clearing seemed to have vanished, and they were surrounded by dense forest on all sides. Panic set in as they realized that they had no idea how to get back to camp. They tried to retrace their steps, but every path seemed to lead deeper into the wilderness. The forest grew darker and more foreboding as the night set in, and the team began to fear for their lives. Emily's sound recorder crackled to life, and they all froze. There was a low growling noise coming from somewhere in the forest. It was the same sound they had heard the night before, and it was getting louder. They began to run, dodging trees and jumping over rocks as they made their way through the forest. But the growling was getting closer, and they could hear the sound of heavy footsteps behind them. Suddenly, Max tripped over a root and fell to the ground. The other two stopped to help him up, but it was too late. The creature emerged from the darkness, and they were face to face with Bigfoot once again. This time, the creature was not alone. Behind it stood a group of smaller creatures, all with shaggy brown fur and piercing yellow eyes. They surrounded the team, trapping them in a circle. Jake pulled out his camera, hoping to capture the moment on film. But the creatures seemed uninterested in the camera. They were focused on the team and their eyes were filled with a primal rage. The team backed away slowly, trying to find a way out of the circle. But the creatures closed in, their growls growing louder. Emily's sound recorder picked up a strange clicking noise, and the team froze. Suddenly, the creatures attacked. They lunged at the team, their massive arms swinging wildly. The team tried to fight back, but they were outnumbered and outmatched. Max was the first to go down, knocked unconscious by a blow to the head. Emily tried to help him up, but she was quickly overpowered by the creatures. Jake, the self-proclaimed Bigfoot expert, was the last one standing. He tried to reason with the creatures, telling them that they meant no harm. But the creatures were not interested in listening. With a final roar, the creatures attacked Jake. The camera fell to the ground capturing only the sounds of screams and growls. The forest fell silent once again, and the team was nowhere to be seen. Days went by, and the team was reported missing. Search parties scoured the woods, but there was no sign of them. The only evidence of their presence was the abandoned campsite and the discarded camera, which was eventually found by a hiker. The footage on the camera was analyzed by law enforcement, and it became clear that the team had fallen victim to an attack by Bigfoot and its offspring. The footage showed the creatures surrounding the team and attacking them with ferocity. The story of the missing filmmakers quickly made national news, and it became a cautionary tale for those who dared to venture into the wilderness. The legend of Bigfoot in Siskiyou County grew even more prominent, with many locals claiming that the creatures were real and dangerous. But for the families of the missing filmmakers, there was no closure. They were left with only questions and the haunting memory of their loved one's final moments. The story of the trio of amateur filmmakers lost and hunted in the woods of Siskiyou County remained a terrifying mystery, a horror story that would never be forgotten. The next morning, a new team of filmmakers arrived in Siskiyou County. They were a professional crew hired by a documentary company to investigate the disappearance of the previous team. The new team was made up of experienced filmmakers and wilderness experts, all of whom were familiar with the dangers of the wilderness and the legend of Bigfoot. As they set up camp, the team discussed their plans for the investigation. They were determined to find out what happened to the previous team 
and to uncover the truth behind the legend of Bigfoot. The team leader, a seasoned filmmaker named Alex, sat down with the locals to gather information. He spoke with hunters, hikers, and forest rangers, all of whom had their own stories of Bigfoot sightings. One of the locals, a grizzled old man named Hank, told Alex about a cave deep in the woods. That cave is where Bigfoot lives, he said, but nobody goes near it. It's too dangerous. Alex was intrigued. He knew that the cave could hold the key to the mystery, and he decided to investigate it himself. The next day, the team set out on the trail to the cave. They hiked through the dense forest, following a narrow path that led deeper into the wilderness. The sun was high in the sky when they finally arrived at the cave. The mouth of the cave was dark and foreboding, and the team hesitated before entering. But Alex was determined to find out what lay inside. He led the team into the cave, their flashlights illuminating the way. As they walked deeper into the cave, they began to hear strange noises. A low growling sound echoed through the caverns, and the team's nerves were on edge. Suddenly, they heard a loud roar that made the ground shake. They froze, listening intently. Then, they saw it. A massive figure emerged from the darkness, its shaggy brown fur glinting in the dim light. It was Bigfoot, and it was staring right at them. The team backed away slowly, trying not to startle the creature. But Bigfoot was not interested in letting them leave. It let out another roar and charged at them, its massive arms swinging wildly. The team scattered, trying to dodge the creature's attacks. Alex pulled out his camera hoping to capture footage of Bigfoot on film. But the creature was too fast, too strong. It knocked the camera out of his hands, sending it crashing to the ground. The team ran deeper into the cave, hoping to find a way out. But the cave seemed to go on forever, twisting and turning in every direction. The growling and roaring of Bigfoot echoed through the caverns, getting louder and closer with each passing moment. Finally, the team stumbled upon a small alcove. It was the only place to hide, the only place where they might be safe from Bigfoot's attacks. They huddled together, their hearts pounding with fear, as they listened to the creature growling and pacing just outside the alcove. As they waited, a sense of despair began to wash over them. They were lost in the darkness, trapped with a creature they knew little about. It seemed like there was no way out, no escape from the clutches of Bigfoot. But then, something unexpected happened. The creature's growling began to soften, and its footsteps became lighter. The team looked at each other in confusion, wondering what was happening. Then they heard a new sound. It was a soft, almost musical sound, like a lullaby. The team strained to listen, trying to understand what it was. Suddenly, they saw a figure emerging from the darkness. It was a woman with long, flowing hair and a gentle smile on her face. She was singing to Bigfoot, and the creature was responding to her with a calmness that the team had never seen before. The woman approached the alcove, and the team hesitated, but there was something about her that made them feel safe, a sense of calmness and serenity that seemed to radiate from within her. She spoke to them in a soft voice, asking them why they had come to the cave. The team explained their mission, telling her about the disappearance of the previous filmmakers and their search for the truth. The woman listened intently, nodding her head in understanding. She explained that Bigfoot was not a monster, but a protector of the forest. She told them that the creature had been watching over the forest for generations, keeping it safe from harm and protecting its inhabitants. The team was stunned. They had never heard this perspective before and it went against everything they had been taught about Bigfoot. But there was something about the woman's words that rang true, a sense of wisdom and knowledge that they could not ignore. As they talked, the team began to realize that they had been wrong about Bigfoot. They had come to the forest with preconceived notions and a desire to capture the creature on film, but they had failed to understand its true nature. The woman led them out of the cave, guiding them through the forest with a gentle hand. She showed them the beauty of the wilderness, pointing out the intricate details of the plants and animals that called it home. And as they walked, 
the team began to see the forest in a new light. They returned to camp that night with a new perspective on their mission. They were no longer interested in capturing Bigfoot on film, but in understanding its role in the forest and its relationship with the land. Over the next few days, the team continued to explore the forest, learning about its secrets and its inhabitants. They spoke with locals, listened to stories, and observed the beauty of the wilderness around them. And as they worked, they began to understand the true power of the forest. They realized that it was not just a collection of trees and animals, but a living, breathing entity with its own rhythms and patterns. They saw how the forest provided for those who respected it and punished those who didn't. Through their experiences, the team grew and developed as individuals. Alex learned to be more humble, recognizing that he had much to learn about the world around him. The other members of the team learned to be more patient, more observant, and more in tune with their surroundings. As they prepared to leave the forest, the team felt a sense of sadness. They had come to Siskiyou County with a mission, but they had discovered so much more than they had ever expected. They had found a deeper connection to the natural world and had learned to appreciate the beauty and power of the wilderness. As they packed up their gear and said their goodbyes to the locals, the team knew that they would never forget their time in Siskiyou County. They had come looking for a monster, but they had found something much more valuable, a new understanding of the world around them, and a deep respect for the wonders of nature. Months had passed since the team's expedition to Siskiyou County. Alex and his team had returned home, and their documentary on the mystery of Bigfoot had become a hit. But despite their success, Alex couldn't shake the feeling that there was still more to discover about the creature and the forest in which it lived. One day, he received a letter in the mail. It was from the woman he had met in the cave, the one who had shown him the true nature of Bigfoot and the forest. She had invited him to return to Siskiyou County to continue his exploration of the wilderness and to learn more about its secrets. Alex was intrigued. He knew that there was still much to discover about the forest, and he couldn't resist the opportunity to return to the place that had changed his life. He gathered his team once again and set out for Siskiyou County. When they arrived, they were greeted by the woman, who introduced herself as Eliza. She led them deep into the forest, showing them the secrets and wonders that lay hidden within. As they walked, Eliza spoke of the forest as if it were a living, breathing entity. She explained how the trees communicated with each other, how the animals followed the rhythms of the forest, and how Bigfoot served as a protector and guardian of the wilderness. Alex and his team listened intently, awed by the depth of Elisa's knowledge. They had never met anyone who understood the forest so intimately, and they began to realize that there was much more to the wilderness than they had ever imagined. As they walked, they came across a small creek, Eliza led them to the water's edge and pointed to a patch of moss growing on a nearby rock. Watch this, she said, as she touched the moss with her hand. The moss began to glow, emitting a soft green light that illuminated the creek. Alex and his team were stunned. They had never seen anything like it before, and they began to realize that there was much more to the forest than they had ever imagined. Elisa explained that the moss was a form of bioluminescent algae, a living creature that thrived in the moist conditions of the creek. She showed them how to touch the moss without damaging it, and they took turns marveling at its beauty. As they continued their journey through the forest, the team began to understand the interconnectedness of all things. They saw how the plants and animals relied on each other for survival, and how Bigfoot served as a guardian of the delicate balance of the forest. Eliza showed them how to forage for food, pointing out the edible plants and berries that grew throughout the forest. She taught them how to build shelters and start fires, skills that were essential for survival in the wilderness. As the days passed, the team grew closer to Eliza. They began to see her as a mentor, a wise woman who had a deep understanding of the natural world. They spent long hours talking with her, listening to her stories and learning from her experiences. Through their interactions, the team also began to understand the deeper spiritual aspects of the forest. 
they learned how to meditate and connect with the natural world, feeling a sense of peace and harmony that they had never experienced before. One night, as they sat around the campfire, Elisa began to speak about the legend of Bigfoot. She explained how the creature had been present in the forest for centuries, serving as a protector and guardian of the wilderness. She also told them about the dangers of exploiting the forest for profit. She spoke of the loggers and miners who had come to the area, destroying the delicate balance of the ecosystem and threatening the existence of Bigfoot and the other creatures that called the forest home. As they listened, the team began to understand the importance of preserving the natural world. They saw how their actions could have a profound impact on the environment, and they vowed to make a difference in their own way. The next day, as they prepared to leave the forest, the team felt a sense of sadness. They had come to Siskiyou County looking for answers, but they had found so much more. They had discovered a deeper connection to the natural world and a newfound respect for the wonders of nature. As they said their goodbyes to Elisa, the team knew that they would never forget their time in the forest. They had learned valuable lessons about the importance of conservation and the need to protect the environment. They had also developed a deeper understanding of themselves and their place in the world. As they traveled back home, Alex and his team couldn't stop talking about their experiences in the forest. They knew that they had been changed forever, and they were eager to share what they had learned with others. Back in the city, Alex and his team began to work on a new documentary. This time, they wanted to focus on the importance of conservation and the need to protect the natural world. They used their experiences in Siskiyou County as a framework for the film, highlighting the beauty and power of the wilderness and the dangers of exploiting it for profit. As they worked on the film, the team also began to make changes in their own lives. They started to recycle more, to use less energy, and to support conservation efforts in their community. They knew that they had a responsibility to protect the environment, and they were determined to do their part. Months later, the documentary was released to critical acclaim. It was hailed as a masterpiece, a powerful statement on the importance of conservation and the need to protect the natural world. And as people watched the film, they began to see the world in a new light. They began to understand the interconnectedness of all things and the importance of preserving the delicate balance of the ecosystem. Alex and his team were proud of what they had accomplished. They had come a long way since their initial expedition to Siskiyou County, and they knew that they had grown as individuals and as filmmakers. But their journey was far from over. They knew that there was still much more to discover about the natural world, and they were eager to continue their exploration. As they planned their next expedition, Alex and his team thought back to their time in the forest. They remembered the lessons they had learned from Elisa, and they knew that they would carry those lessons with them wherever they went. And as they set out once again into the wilderness, they were filled with a sense of wonder and excitement. They knew that there were still mysteries to uncover, and they were eager to see what the natural world had in store for them. Alex and his team had been planning their next expedition for months. They had decided to explore a remote region in the Andes Mountains, an area known for its rugged terrain and treacherous weather conditions. As they prepared for their journey, the team thought back to their experiences in Siskiyou County. They remembered the lessons they had learned about the importance of preserving the natural world, and they were determined to continue their mission to explore and document the wonders of the environment. When they arrived in the Andes, they were greeted by a local guide, a man named Louis who had lived in the mountains his entire life. Louis was a skilled hiker and mountaineer, and he knew the region like the back of his hand. As they set out on the trail, Louis pointed out the unique features of the landscape. He showed them the snow-capped peaks of the mountains, the crystal-clear streams that flowed through the valleys, and the diverse array of plant and animal life that called the region home. As they walked, the team began to understand the unique challenges of exploring such a remote region. The weather was unpredictable, with sudden storms and extreme temperatures that could change in an instant. The terrain was rugged and treacherous, with steep cliffs and rocky outcroppings that required careful navigation. 
But despite the challenges, the team was determined to continue their mission. They set up camp each night, huddling together for warmth and discussing their plans for the next day's exploration. They talked about the unique features of the landscape, the geological formations that were unlike anything they had ever seen before, and the potential for discovering new species of plants and animals. As they continued their journey, they encountered a group of indigenous people who lived in the region. The people were friendly and welcoming, inviting the team to join them for a traditional meal around the campfire. As they ate, the team learned about the people's rich cultural heritage. They listened to stories about their ancestors, who had lived in the mountains for generations, and about the importance of preserving the natural world for future generations. Alex and his team were struck by the deep connection that the indigenous people had to the natural world. They saw how they lived in harmony with the environment, using only what they needed and respecting the delicate balance of the ecosystem. As they spent more time with the indigenous people, the team began to understand the complex relationship between humans and the environment. They saw how their actions, even unintentional, could have a profound impact on the natural world, and they were inspired to do more to protect it. One day, as they hiked through a dense forest, the team encountered a rare species of bird. The bird had a striking red coloration and a unique vocalization, and the team realized that they had discovered a new species. Excited by their discovery, the team spent several days observing the bird and documenting its behavior. They took detailed notes on its appearance, habitat, and behavior, and they captured photos and videos of the bird in its natural environment. As they worked, the team realized the importance of their discovery. They saw that their documentation could help to raise awareness of the need to protect the natural world and its unique inhabitants, and they were determined to share their findings with the world. But as they prepared to leave the region, the team encountered a new challenge. They learned that a mining company had plans to begin drilling in the area, a move that would destroy the delicate balance of the ecosystem and threaten the existence of the indigenous people and the unique species that called the region home. Alex and his team knew that they had to act fast. They contacted local conservation groups and worked with the indigenous people to raise awareness of the threat posed by the mining company. They organized protests and rallies, and they used their documentary filmmaking skills to create a powerful film that highlighted the importance of preserving the natural world. Their efforts paid off. The mining company was forced to abandon their plans, and the region was designated as a protected area ensuring that the delicate balance of the ecosystem would be preserved for future generations. As they journeyed back home, Alex and his team reflected on their experiences in the Andes Mountains. They had discovered a new species, learned about the rich cultural heritage of the indigenous people, and fought to protect the natural world from destruction. But perhaps most importantly, they had grown as individuals. They had learned to appreciate the beauty and wonder of the natural world, and they had developed a deeper understanding of the importance of preserving it for future generations.